Hello, this is a presentation about sense nuts and bolts, some of the details of small angle neutron scattering. First, uh, describe the instrument. This is something about the active components like the loss selector, error detector, and then sense basics like geometry, typical data, and uh, describe the cells used. The acquisition, reduction, analysis, and then uh, sense smearing, say something about sense smearing, sense resolution. Hopefully show you a new sense instrument and a data set. 30 meter sense instrument is monochromation using a velocity selector. Out of a white beam coming from the neutron source, you select one wavelength between 5 and 20 angstroms. Then collimation uh, using two apertures one source aperture and one sample aperture to define the beam, scattering from the sample, then detection using an air detector. It can be moved close to the sample and so on. So this gives you an idea of the scale involved. Their characteristics, velocity selectors gives us Neutrons between 5 inch and 20 angstroms. The size regime, uh, this is in Fourier space, size regime between 10 angstroms, 6,000 angstroms, something like that. And the area detector, uh, 64 times 64 centimeters square. Uh, various types of equipments that we have built up over year, the years temperature control, shear cell, pressure cell, uh, rheometer and so on. Show you a neutron velocity selector. It's a cylindrical drum that spins at very high speed, like 5000 RPM, so with a helical slot. Neutrons have finite speed. For example, a 5 angstrom neutron would travel at something like uh, 5000. Uh, 800 meters per second. So, uh, because of spinning helical slot, the neutrons with the right speed will make it out of the selector. Those that are too fast or too slow get absorbed. So this is how a neutron velocity selector works. Air detector, using nuclear reaction, neutrons get absorbed in helium-3, gives two charged particles which uh, with a voltage get detected uh, is a detection cloud and so on. The showing you an area detector just to get a feel for the, the scale. This is the big NG3 vessel. This is a velocity selector. This is an area detector. Uh, small angle neutron scattering. Those are the four steps that we talked about. This is the scattering variable is proportional to the scattering angle, inversely proportional to the neutron wavelengths. Let me show you example, scattering example right off, 10%, which is called pyronic, those are my cells. There you go. And then if you do, uh, you take a cut, you get intensity goes up and then comes down. This is a structure factor effect. This is a form factor effect. In other words, particle size, this is interparticle effect. Just to give you a feel for what is involved, this is the plotting it backward, intensity versus Q, but that's what we're dealing with, uh, doing an averaging like this. So, sense samples and cell holders. Samples could be solid, gels or solution thicknesses, one millimeter or two millimeter. If uh, using deuterated uh, Solvent, for example, would be 2 mm. If you're using hydrogenated solvent, it would be 1 mm, and so on. So we have the old banjo cells, which uh, we don't have many of. And we have mostly demountable cells. These are titanium cells. We have quartz windows. Quartz is transparent to neutrons. So data acquisition, we save the configurations for you at the beginning. So what do we do? We choose a neutron wavelength. Mostly it will be 6 angstrom. That's where we have the most neutrons with certain spread. 
We choose the source to sample and sample detector distances, low Q and high Q, two configuration, and one in between intermediate Q. So we'll be saving three configurations for you. Choose the counting time, order between, for example, five minutes at high Q to like 30 minutes or 45 minutes at low Q. Uh, so we have to measure empty cell, sample itself, and blocked beam. We have to measure transmission, transmission for the empty cell, for the sample, and then also the empty beam transmission. Neutron transmission, the ratio of the transmitted beam to the incident beam. All of this will become obvious when you get beam time, you come here and we help you with data acquisition. So data reduction, uh, all of this is under the hood. You don't have to worry about how, what our software is doing, but just to give you a feel for it, we subtract the empty cell and the blocked beam. The blocked beam is we stop the neutrons and we measure background due to electronic noise and so on. We rescale the intensity to an absolute scale, inverse centimeter. Uh, so finally you get a cross section. Uh, uh, in other words, scattering cross section. Sense data analysis, I have three methods. Uh, there are really two methods. There is a standard plots which you perform on the fly. When you get the data, you reduce it, you look at it, do a Guinea plot, a plot, uh, and so on. And then data fitting. This is the most important thing for data reduction. It's just like after you look at the, your uh, intensity versus Q, you decide what model to use. Do some uh, data fitting to models. And we have uh, over a hundred models that we have built up over the years. So you here, here you will need uh, sense staff to help you decide on which models will be useful for your scattering. So smeared sense data, I'm going to show you scattering from uh, silica particles in D2O. There's the blue circles here. Then scattering from the smeared model. Remember, in order to do data analysis, you have to smear your model before doing the fitting. And here we're showing you the unsmeared model fit, in other words, uh, without instrumental smearing. So you see that instrumental smearing broadens the peaks and fills in the valleys. Sense resolution. Uh, I don't want to get too much into this. All I want to tell you, uh, there is contribution from geometry, in other words, size of apertures into distances, and contribution from the wavelength spread, delta lambda over lambda. So at low Q is mostly from geometry, and at high Q, the wavelength spread takes over. Like uh, if you have a peak very far out in Q, it will broaden due to this wavelength spread. Uh, it's because wavelength spread for SANS is around 10%, 15%, not negligible. Why? Because we don't have too many neutrons. We have to almost like compromise SANS resolution and scattering intensity. The u sense instruments, schematics, there you go. You have thermal neutrons. You have uh, pre-monochromator and then triple bounce monochromator in silicon. The sample here and then an analyzer, also triple bounce, and then detection here. So you set data set, uh, U-Sans data set. Let me show you, uh, this is SANS, this is U-Sans. SANS took less than an hour, U-Sans took five to six hours. See JAGD here, in other words, poor statistics. We're building a 40 meter V-Sans which will cover this jagged region nicely and uh, might, might take two hours to, to acquire data in this region. 